Welcome to Flat Earth QED. I am joined tonight by Chris Monk and Anthony Riley to make the first presentation of the Isle of Man model in Flat Earth format. So if I can say first of all a quick hello to Anthony Riley. Good to have you here. Good evening, sir. How are we? Very well, very well. And also Chris Monk, how are you? Good how how are you? Good to have you. Yep, yeah, uh, thanks and uh, good to be here. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Now I've got up your Isle of Man Blender model. So without further ado, can you take it away and tell us exactly what it is and how it works? So you're seeing the screen there, no problem. That's good. Okay. Um, well, it's really actually very simple. Um, what it is is a 3D model of uh, elevations. So it's actually a, a three-dimensional elevation model um, just on a planar coordinate system. The camera is uh, set to the distance away from the the island at uh, 31 and a half miles, which is the observation point for the background footage that's seen in behind here. And you can see that if I turn the the physical model on and off, you'll see there's a, a panoramic photograph in the background, which was compiled from video. And the rest is pretty straightforward from there. So the uh, elevations can be tested so it senses basic basically very simple trigonometry and elevations the height of this i'll talk a lot on off here so you can see the the white line at the top and i'll zoom in so the center the camera right now is pointing at this line which is this blue line crossing the top of this mountain which in reality is snaefell mountain which has a known elevation of 2013 feet and that's what that blue line represents so once you know the elevation and the distance to the camera at 31 miles, you can, on the bottom part here, cross-reference the two in a three-dimensional format, such that if I zoom in on the bottom, I'll zoom in on the top here a little tiny bit here, so you can see we're still in the center of frame. The camera is physically looking at the top of this model on the bottom where those two lines intersect so you have the circle which is the blue line which is set to the distance of the 31 miles to that point was well, actually i think around these 38 miles give or take to the top of this mountain and the camera intersects at that point which gives you an angle of actually the camera and your elevation is uh, 0.57 degrees of angle up to the top of the mountain. So once you have those three uh, coordinates, well, the two, the elevation and the distance and the angle, then you can you know physically confirm based on the footage that what's seen in the footage is actually 2013 feet of elevation in the actual photograph. And from there, you can test essentially anything you want in this model simply by positioning the camera to anything you anything you want to see in the footage and measure heights, elevations, approximate distances simply by targeting them with the line of the camera, line of sight. And the other interesting thing is since it's based on planar physics, you can scale on the bottom, this is kind of neat too, to verify, like this is how you can do the predictive analysis and verify what is seen in the in the footage is is reality. Um, for an example, is if I take the picture and maintain its aspect ratio and scale it, you know, towards the camera and away from the camera, you can see that it should scale back and forth by cross sectioning and actually cutting through the model like a plane. Then you can see that. If I take it out so you can see that the mountains are in the background and as I pull it through, the mountains will start to appear at their proper elevations. And from that, you can use this, these principles to effectively let's see, I'll bring the camera and rotate it slightly to the right here for an example. So you can see now I'm rotated to the right and I've got the model doesn't match the profile of the image in the background. If I zoom in a little tiny bit here, make it a little more clear. But as I drag the picture, maintaining its aspect ratio, scaled to the camera position, 
as I pull it back through, you can see the what will appear in the physical model now will match that profile in the back as I scroll through, which is a great way to test the distances, how far you were physically seeing in the footage, what's there that shouldn't be there, and what is there that should be there in reverse. And the camera here, I can go into the right. And you can use that to determine that in all three aspects, you know, the uh, the flat distance, the, the elevation angles, how far in distance was actually caught in the footage. So it makes a great tool for predictive analysis of any footage. And you scale back through the model, you can see that if you go back too far, um, things will start to appear that aren't in the footage. For example, that tip of this little mountain range here. The top of this mountain, well, it's almost a mountain, a fairly high, high level ground anyway, is way back on the back side of the island. So you can see that that is there in the model, but not in the photo. So you can actually scroll it forward and say, okay, well, we were seeing something approximately, you know, to these distances. And you can rule, you can rule out essentially in reverse what was seen and what wasn't seen. So. And the only reason, the only way this works is using uh, flat planes. Okay, from the right. And that's because you can see it's, and this is an orthographic view. So you have to take all these things into consideration to see that the difference between orthographic projections like that are used on uh, peak finders and so forth, those are orthographic projections, which don't really represent perspective. So this model takes into account perspective views on a flat plane and you can measure anything you want. It's that simple. And did you count any pixels in regards to the calculations for what you've achieved? No, you don't have to. It's just uh, angles of rotation on the camera, the elevation angle to the top of uh, the mountain or any any feature that's on the model. And you can uh, all you need is the distance the elevation angle and or the altitude of whatever it is you're looking at and it swings through an arc and what i did do was um, when i composited the image um, you can kind of see in the bottom here this this image is actually an arc right so it's it replicates the arc of a person when you were standing taking the footage and you pan the camera left and right it swings through an arc right so it's Pixels per degree on a flat plane superimposed over flat images um, wouldn't be as accurate as this, right? Because this is accounting for the arc swing of the camera. So, so that's this, about it. this means it's totally repeatable anywhere in the world with any picture, right? Absolutely. And, and people that want to do it, you don't have to have, uh, just to make that clear for folks too, is like you don't have to have an elevation like physical 3D model, if you simply have um, the the image and the angle of the camera, it's tilt up or down, and you know the elevation and the distance between the two. You can you can uh, you don't even have to know the elevation, but if you have the angle of the camera to that distance, you can calculate the elevations. So you just take the you know 0.53 degrees that that angle, plop it into uh, trigonometry calculator and you can calculate that that's 2013 feet from a straight line of sight at sea level it's uh, flat plane stuff at any distance and so this was based on you know the distance to the lighthouse the distance to the top of the mountain on these circles that's what they represent that's the that's the distance of the radius of these circles is the distance to the object so you just do circles out you know the standard protractor on a piece of paper even measure them out get your angle of elevation and the angle of the camera the height of the elevations and do the straight pythagorean trigonometry a squared b squared c squared and the angle that's all you need simple stuff where did you get the map from that it was based on doesn't look like google earth um, this one is just a LiDAR map that I uh, 
downloaded. You can just Google a LiDAR map of the United Kingdom and you'll find find them. I think this one might have come out of uh, I have to look at the reference, I have to go look it up. But just Google the LiDAR map for the United Kingdom and you'll find them. Can you just show it to They're flat. They're, they're, yeah, if you there you go. It's just a LiDAR map, which is a light map. There you go. And then to make to make this model, I took uh, another one specifically for the Isle of Man, and then in 3D software you can displace it, and that's how you create these uh, displacement maps. So this is a light map; it's the same type of white and black map. And then you just apply displacement rate based on the uh, the gradient of light and dark, and then it builds this uh, wireframe type of. I can put it to wireframe if you want to see it. And look at that from maybe the right hand side. Zoom in a bit on the bottom. Yeah, so it's a displacement map based on the wireframe, right? So you can kind of fly through them. Right, it's like, it's, yeah, let's see if I can zoom in a bit better. Let's see, I can get back on that. Go back to the camera view here. Yeah, that might be a bit better. So you can see it's in a wireframe there. And that's all it does. It just displaces based on the on the black and white gradient of the light. So then it's a light map, which is a lidar stands for uh, light distance and ranging. And so can you just show us? Light. Can you just show us on a full? Um, horizontal aspect, so from the camera position of the St. Bees with the lines drawn out, the straight lines that the camera looks through. Here we go. Let's see. Might be better if you tilt it down a little bit on it just so it's a, a bit more apparent, if you know what I mean. Let's see, right hand side, if I get her to zoom out here. There. Something there we to that go. effect. Yeah, so if you, that would that would kind of show parallax if I do it from the front, maybe it'll be a, more of a side on, yeah. So basically, yeah, you're standing 30, 31 miles away over here at the camera point, and you're zoomed out looking at the map in an elevation profile this way. And this would be it in a From the side on. From the side on, yeah, so this elevation uh, circle here. So you can see that this circle is now white. I'll zoom right into the top of the mountain here. So the white line represents the circle that we saw before. And the camera is this line that's where they intersect at that point. Is how you can tell that this circle is at 2013 feet. And the camera angle is 0.57 degrees then, from 31 miles away. Right? And these, it, when those two intersect at this point, that's the top of the mountain. Right. Is it possible with this view staying like this? I don't know how difficult this is to do on the fly, but can you drag the photograph through it so that it's dragging through the bottom image? Is that a possibility? Um, let's see. Um, just want, or, or get it lined up and get back to this position. I just want to show the audience that the, the photograph that Anthony took versus this absolutely flat as a pancake line, you can see it on the bottom. I just want to show them where the Snaefell Mountain uh, intersects with the model like you've just shown with the camera angle so they can see physical evidence of the picture that he took, dissected, there you go, yeah. perfect. Right, yeah, so... Can you just move it back and forth just so that it's, hopefully that'll illustrate to the audience what exactly what I'm describing. You've already shown it once, but... Yeah, so the camera's intersecting here, the height is 2013 feet, the circle's to 31 miles. And the photograph is basically now intersecting through this line right here, approximately. And you just you can move the that back and forth. So if I bring the photograph through the image like that, you'll see that it's cutting through it. Right. So where the peak appears and the circle appears, and the camera all converge at that point is exactly where it is in reality. Two thousand thirteen feet. 31 and a half miles away at an angle of 0.573 degrees is that point. 
So then in the yeah, alternative, slowly. in the alternative, could you also do it from the first person perspective at St. B's, panning right to left or left to right, and then lining up the contours with the evidence and showing how it matches? I'm See, not sure how you mean. What, take what you your mean camera exactly? position to St. B's, basically. Yeah, go back to St. B's and you're looking out as though you're looking at the photograph. As though you were holding the camera and you took the picture. First person perspective. That's it. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so you're... Something like that, basically. So you're standing at St. B's with the camera. Looking back. So your camera's angled up to the top of the mountain and this is your altitude. Right there. So this is more of an orthographic. You can see it says ortho over here. This is a perspective view, which changes things a little quite a bit, right? If right. This is an orthographic view, which would be more similar to uh, Peak Finder, for example, because that's a they take it and they do it in a flat plane, X, Y, Z, orthographic view, and this is perspective. So it's basically three dimensions versus two dimensions. Correct. Yeah. Orthographic is, yeah, you can think of it that way. Orthographic is basically two two dimensions, and perspective is obviously three, right? Because you have depth of field versus just a flat plane, or like a flat surface in 2D. That's okay. how it works. It's that, that easy to do. Is there anything else you would like to show anybody who's watching right now a on a flat Earth model of the Isle of Man? What else can you show us? If not, I'm happy to round out there. Mm -hmm. Let's see, you can basically, I'll try this here, make, this might be okay. For example, if we rotate the camera down a little bit, pan it to the left, zoom into the lighthouse so we know its elevations and locations. Uh, this line here represents 159 feet of elevation. And if I turn off the model and look at the picture by itself, this is this line is 159 feet to the top of this block, which represents Mogul Lighthouse. And you can toggle it on off and basically see that that's where it is in the image. Right. That's perspective to use. It's very interesting. Simple stuff. Absolutely fantastic. Was there anything you wanted to add, uh, Anthony, before we round this out? Just do a pan left to pan right if you can and show us how it matches with the, the actual evidence. I don't know if you can set it back up again because you've, you've had it on the side view. I can zoom in here. Yeah. I'll move the picture back. I have to move the picture back a little bit now that we brought it in to, the, to that point. But scale. Is it the amount of times you showed us that how it matches the contour of the, the land in the background? It does it all the time. I'm hoping that that's what you repeat now and just show. Basically, it matches perfectly. Yeah, so you pan to the left. There's the profile. I'll, first, I'll start at the left and pan right. And just kind of keep an eye on the the profile in the background. I have the picture up just a little bit so you can see it like obviously above the model, right? So it's elevated slightly. Just so you can actually see it. Otherwise it would be the line would be the same. And if you can right, just there's the profile. If you can just slide back to one of those mountains two or three frames to the left and then stop. Just, just, just to pick a random one, and now just to prove the point once more, if you can slide the uh, photograph through the image so it cuts through that mountain, just because it's a completely different one. Sorry to get you tasked with various things on the fly, Chris. Oh, it's good. That's it's a great way to to test the the model, right? So scale, maintaining aspects, going back to the camera. Slide it through. So, I mean, this is a good way to do the testing, right? So, you can tell that on the bottom, you can see in, in the top image, 
is this bit here, right? In the background, if I actually do a little, this profile, I can try and draw it in here. So you get that mountain in the background and this in the, front, in the foreground, right? And you can grab that picture and scale it through that section to say, okay, where does that mountain in the background appear? Well, it starts to appear right here. And finally, you see it pop up in the background. And then you can just go back to the bottom and compare it. I'll put it back in material view here, it might be easier. Right. Compare that. And now you can tell that the camera is looking at this mountain in the background or elevation. I wouldn't call this a mountain compared to these ones, but this is where that appears. And I think it's called Killin, Killarn, maybe. Don't quote me on it, but that mountain area. So that's the range of the camera. You can verify ranges by moving the image through the physical model. And there's other things you can do too. Is, uh, what else did I have in here? You can turn off the model. Displacement, you can turn on this one, turn off the LiDAR map. And let me scale it up here just a bit. Scroll so we can see more of the bottom part. So you can kind of tell how things are. This is actually scaled to reality here. So scale, bring it in to there. To determine some of the scales other than just locating landmarks, which I did also, but you can bring it in and see that using a satellite shot from the top, that this part that looks kind of like a nose of an airplane is this cliff face here. So you can see the how these lines line up with this cliff face drop off. So that's that point of land in the image on the bottom is this point of land on the ground in reality and you can scroll back and forth and basically pick any landmark you want and scroll that picture through and begin to line them up there's another good spot that might be easy to do well i was going to say to, to to round out was what was the furthest thing he saw and therefore what was the range of the camera on that day um, I think it was around, if I do it through the model again, it's around 40 miles, 40, 42 miles. Yeah. So there's a way you showed us that earlier in this yeah. presentation that there's a mountain that does not appear. Yeah, that's basically how you determine how the maximum range was. It's by looking for what's not there. So I did that by, I think it was in this area here, and scale the picture back until something appears that shouldn't be there, right there. All right, let's bring the camera back to there. So in the top image, this bit here actually isn't in the photograph. So when I toggle, you can see when I toggle the model on and off, it's not there. Peak here. So that is an easy way to determine that this peak in the background is too far away. So it's not in the, in the actual evidence. So the, the photograph and the camera couldn't have seen it. So it has to be somewhere in this range is the maximum. So that was, I think I measured it at, well, you could actually go physically measure it now if you wanted. I don't have the dimensions right here right now, but yeah, man, let's definitely use this as a measuring tool right here, right now, and find out the distance. I'm I'm well up for that. Let's see. Yeah, take this. You guys can help with some math, maybe. Let's see. We'll circle that one. Scale back to there. So it's cutting through right about there. 
So 97 miles divided by two. So just gotta figure you just have to figure that out and see what you got. 97 divided by two. If you wanna do it, it's 48 and a half 48 miles. And a half. Yeah. So that would be about the maximum range. It'd be 48 and a half miles to this. So we know that doesn't appear in the footage. And it's between that range and scaled back to the extent of the land on the right hand side. So you can see, okay, that's still in the image. And bring that circle back. Scale back to about here. So 40. So that's the range, 40 miles to there's in the maximum range. I would say 40 to 42 miles is about the maximum for that particular day. Are you on a better day? You might get back further, but. Excellent. Yep. Right. I think with that, I'm going to round out this particular part of the show. So I'm going to say, first of all, a massive thank you to Sleeping Warrior and to Chris Monk. So thank you very much, Sleeping Warrior. I believe you have got a second show lined up in any minute now, in 10 minutes. Indeed. So once this presentation is finished, there will be a second show where we discuss some of the intricate details and some of the less important details about this particular model but I think that's pretty much going to be it for that so I'll say also a thank you to Chris Monk thank you very much for doing that Chris it's been an absolute pleasure you're quite welcome anytime and also I'll say a massive thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this presentation I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video <laughs>